Hey everybody, what's going on? Uh, I'm going to try and do a weekly video for you covering all the things that we do here at AG Bullock. Um, I know there's a few videos floating around out there on YouTube. Um, some of them are very informational. Uh, some of them are hit and miss. Uh, almost everyone that I've seen uh, haven't been very consistent with going week by week. So I figure we'll give it a shot here and see if we can stay consistent with it. Um, I'm in AG Bullock class 008-22. Uh, we reported on Sunday, June 19th, 2022, and we will graduate on September 20th, 2022. So uh, for those of you watching this, that's time frame. Uh, so week one, um, I guess I should give you a little bit of background here. Uh, I am with the Kansas Army National Guard and I commissioned in August of 2020. Um, I originally was slotted to attend AG Bullock in August of 2021. Uh, however, due to a shoulder injury and shoulder surgery, I had to reschedule that class. So, uh, that being said, uh, my trip to AG Bullock started on Saturday, June the 18th, uh, 2022. Uh, left my home, drove uh, in my POV, um, stayed overnight in Mississippi, on Saturday and then finished the drive to Fort Jackson, South Carolina on Sunday, June the 19th, uh, which was originally our report date. Um, we were originally told that we would have a formation on the evening of June 19th. Uh, however, with the recent federal recognition of Juneteenth as a federal holiday, uh, the military decided that uh, June 19th was going to be a holiday, uh, so we got an extended four-day weekend, so to speak. Uh, we actually didn't have our first formation until Monday, June 20th, at about 1,800 hours. Uh, it was pretty informal, um, but I'll get into that here in just a minute. Uh, so I arrived at Fort Jackson on Sunday, June 19th, 2022, and checked into my hotel, which was the Candlewood. Um, for those of you coming for the future, uh, there are two new hotels here on post that are about two years old, uh, the Candlewood West and the Candlewood East. Uh, I'm at the Candlewood East, um, or you may be put up at the Dozier Hall. Um, as you can see behind me, the uh, room is pretty nice. I've got two queen-size beds. I've got a kitchenette with a stove and dishwasher. Um, I'm on the fourth floor, so actually right outside my room and just down the hall is the laundry facility. Um, it's got a, a full bathroom um, and pretty good amenities here. So, um, there's a pool on site, there's a gym inside the building, uh, there's also three gyms on post, um, Perez, Vanguard, and Coleman. Um, Vanguard Gym is really geared towards CrossFit. Um, Perez is sort of just kind of your standard run-of-the-mill gym, as is Coleman. Uh, the benefit to Coleman is it's about a half mile away uh, from the hotel, and it is also open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All you have to do is go in uh, while it's staffed, Monday through Friday, 05 to 1900, and sign up. Uh, after that, you can scan in the building with your CAC card, uh, it's got a sauna, full basketball gym, weight room, cardio room, uh, aerobics room, whatever you can think of. So, uh, like I said, I arrived on Sunday. Our first formation was Monday. Um, so Sunday afternoon after I got here, I went off post, went down the road to the store, got some groceries. There's a Walmart right outside the main gate. Uh, there's a Target about three, four miles away, and there's a Kroger, a Trader Joe's, wh whatever you can imagine for groceries. Um, you're also 
Um, a lot of it is the DFAC, and there is a drill sergeant DFAC. Um, it's about a quarter mile away. It's within walking distance, not too far. Um, got some groceries, kind of got the lay of land for what's around. Um, that was all on Sunday. Uh, Monday, I did some additional running around, got some last minute items that I needed, and then we had our first formation uh, Monday night at 1800. Uh, we were basically just provided information on what we would be doing the following day, Tuesday, June the 21st. Uh, we were advised basically that we were going to report at 06 up at the SSI building, um, which is where the uh, majority of our in briefs and whatnot have, ha have happened up, up to this point, um, which is where the majority of your classes are going to take place uh, during your time at AG Bullock. Um, we were told we'd do height and weight, zero six, first thing, reporting PTs. Um, not a real big deal. Basically, we were told that um, in order to receive consideration for honors, um, you had to pass height and weight, um, which doesn't mean that you had to not be taped. It just means that um, if you know you have to be taped, you have to fit within the parameters for taping. Um, so yeah, that was that was pretty much all for Monday. Uh, we were also told that after height and weight, we'd be going over to um, in-processing uh, or reception here at Fort Jackson to do dental, vision, and hearing. Uh, so Monday morning, reported 06 and PTs, did height and weight. Uh, basically, as soon as we were done with that, uh, we came back to the hotel, got changed, ate some breakfast. Um, the hotels all have uh, complimentary breakfast down in the, the lobby. So if you want to go to the DFAC for breakfast, you can. If you want to cook something in your room for breakfast, you can do that. Um, or you can just go downstairs to the lobby and get your normal hotel breakfast. Um, for breakfast, we got changed into our uniforms and went over to the in-processing on post and conducted uh, dental, vision, and hearing. Um, nothing too fantastic about that. Uh, you get treated like a basic trainee. Um, yeah, you complete those three things. Uh, then we were released for lunch. Um, Either you can have lunch in your room or you can go to the DFAC for lunch. Um, it's normal DFAC food. It's not anything to write home about, but um, it is free, so to speak. You use your CAC card, or your CAC rather, and you get your lunch. Um, after lunch, we went to our classroom in the SSI, um, and we had a G6 in brief. Um, for those of you not familiar, G6 is basically your uh, your comms, your your signal, your computer folks, your IT guys. Uh, so they came and gave us a brief on um, basically our IT policy, uh, things like that. Um, you will have to have a current uh, cyber awareness security challenge on file uh, for your time here at Fort Jackson. So if you're coming here soon, uh, make sure that you've got that done on Fort Gordon's site. Uh, we also received an in-brief from our class advisor. Um, each class is assigned basically a captain, um, and then it's, it, they will either be your instructor or you'll have a civilian instructor for the duration of your time here. Um, yeah, so that was our first day, Tuesday, in a nutshell. Um, again, we came in on the back end of a four-day weekend, so we had Monday off. Uh, Tuesday was our first official day. Um, Wednesday, um, we actually didn't even have to report until about 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, reason being, there's two classes going on simultaneously. Um, I'm in class 08 and 07 is also here. We both started on the same day. Our classrooms right across the, from the hall from each other, but uh, there are two classes 
that started and will end on the same time. And then there's two classes that are going on that started before us that will graduate prior to us. Um, there's also this captain's career course, some warrant officer basic courses. Um, SLC is going on here. And it's a pretty, pretty large and pretty busy uh, post. So Wednesday, uh, June 22nd, um, again, we didn't have to report until 9 a.m. Um, we reported to our classroom while class seven went to dental. While they were at dental, uh, we did our ISAP uh, overview or the individual student assessment plan. Uh, basically went over the expectations uh, of us during the course, um, academic grading, and the overall average that you have to maintain for the course. It also covers sort of some of the things that are uh, required of you during the course. Um, we then went to uh, the SSI Annex for the uh, Alpha Company Commander uh, to embrief us. Uh, again, basically just welcoming us to Fort Jackson and giving us their expectations of us during the course and what we can expect to receive from the course. After that, we went to lunch and then we essentially switched places with uh, class 07. We, we went to dental, um, which if you've been in for any amount of time, you've probably been to dental. If you haven't, um, it's pretty much just going and getting your mouth checked out. If there's no issues, they sign off on you. You go about your day. If you have dental issues, they try to schedule a follow-up appointment for you to get you squared away so that you're uh, green in your med pros. Um, after that, we went back to the SSI Annex and we were, um, we got some more briefs from the Bureau of Training Director, Chief, uh, Major Joyner, and then uh, we also received a brief from the Department of Training Chief, um, then we went back to the classroom after that where we had um, class introductions, basically run of the mill, hey this is who I am, this is where I'm from, this is what I enjoy doing, um, just kind of get to know everybody in your class. So that was Wednesday, uh, June 22nd. Um, Let me see here. Sorry, I'm trying to trying to look at a schedule here. Um, so Thursday, June 23rd, now uh, we started our day off in the SSI auditorium, uh, which basically the SSI, as I mentioned, is just one giant building where all the AG stuff is. Uh, it's located just north of um, the Candlewood Hotels. Uh, so really not too bad of a walk. Um, you've got to go up a whole bunch of stairs and up a hill, but aside from that, it's, it's pretty close. So we started off in the auditorium Thursday uh, with an MSO or an International Military Student Office. Um, part of your course here, there's international students that come over and learn the AG branch as well. So uh, there's one in class 08 right now. Um, he's from Jordan and one in class 07. Um, so we received our MSO brief, then we received a finance in brief, and then we went to, uh, we went to lunch. Uh, after lunch, uh, we received more briefs. Um, we received an EO brief, um, and then we received a safety brief. Uh, from one of the civilians here on post, basically um, telling us what we're allowed to do during PT, um, routes you have to follow, um, ice sheeting procedures, uh, things to do in the event of a tornado, a fire, or an active shooter. Uh, we were also provided with a list of off-limit establishments that are off post. Um, 
again, I don't. Some of you may be prior service. Some may be coming in straight from basic training in OCS. Um, you're essentially treated like an adult here. So in your free time, you're allowed to go off post. Um, do with that information what you will. Um, make good decisions. Um, then for. Um, those people that have leadership positions, um, they were notified um, the following day, Friday, um, was our first group PT session. Um, we weren't allowed to do PT on post because we hadn't received an official safety brief and nobody with the exception of the few of us that are prior service, um, have PT belts or safety equipment. So uh, we all decided as a group that we were going to go down to the canal front in downtown uh, Columbia, and we were going to go for a group run, which is really good scenery. Um, it's very humid. Um, yeah, so we did our first PT session at 06 canal front, went for a run 20 minutes out, 20 minutes back. Um, wasn't bad definitely come here in shape um, after that if you were not in a leadership position um, you weren't required to report to class until 10 um, if you had a leadership position they all had respective times that they had to go receive their um, leadership counselings so um, our first class today was a sharp brief in the SSI auditorium um, if you've been in for a while, even if you haven't, uh, I'm sure basic or OCS or um, ROTC or whatever your commissioning source was, you probably received a sharp brief. Um, that occupied the majority of our morning. After that, we were released for lunch. Um, after lunch, we were back in the auditorium uh, for a hearing conservation brief. Uh, basically a brief talking about hearing loss and how to protect your hearing. We're all provided with the little triple or double flange ear pro that you stick in that have the little things that you can open up um, so you can still hear talking. Yeah, um, and then we were um, we an LPD brief or Leadership Professional Develop brief in the auditorium. Um, which is basically just kind of a low-key conversation with um, the lieutenant colonel and basically just welcoming us here and asking if we had any questions, giving us tips for success as we basically embark on this AG slash officer journey. Um, after that we went up to the classroom and we were, we were kind of briefed on what would be happening the following week. Um, which I'm not going to get into right now. Um, that'll be for another video. Um, like I said, I'm going to try to do one of these each week. I know a lot of people have come up short. I'm sure later on in the course I'll be busy. Um, but for sure, like the first seven weeks are supposed to be classroom stuff, so I'll, I'll try to stay up on these. Um, after release from class on Friday, it was pretty much our time. Um, as a matter of fact, each night after class, it's, it's pretty much your time. So you can do with it what you will, study. Uh, there's some online training you have to do, some IPSA training, some MILPAY training, IPERMS training, um, anti-terrorism training, cyber awareness, all, all the things that I mentioned um, are all things that you have to have done. If you, if you do them ahead of time before you get here, it's really not that time consuming. Uh, familiarize yourself with FM 1-0. Uh, it's kind of the HR Bible for the Army. Um, like I said, outside of that, once you're released from class, it's it's your free time. Um, I race bikes, I race BMX, so uh, I brought my bike with me. It's just kind of chilling over here in the corner. Uh, so Friday night, uh, I headed up to Rock Hill. Um, anything within 250 miles or less, you don't have to fill out a pass or anything like that. You just kind of go. So that's what I did Friday night. Um, went up to Rock Hill and raced. Sorry, I'm going my stuff back in here. Um, and then 
headed back, and a lot of people went downtown and kind of checked out some uh, breweries. Um, Saturday, the weekend is is pretty well yours. Um, I think Saturday I went to the grocery store, and then um, hit up the pool this weekend. There's a nice there's a pool outside the hotel. Um, it's a saltwater pool, which is pretty cool. Um, got a little sunburnt, as you can kind of tell. Um, it is very hot, very humid here, so especially during the summertime. Uh, being this close to the ocean, it's kind of what you get. So, um, yeah, that was that was week one. Um, week two is going to be a short week, also. We got the Fourth of July coming up, so um, we're we're in class Monday through Thursday, and then we've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday off. So another four day weekend. Um, so it's pretty cool. I'll make sure to try to do another video at the end of week two, update you guys on um, what's going on here. So um, yeah, if you're coming to AG Bullock, not that bad so far. The lodging is pretty cool um, for what it is. I mean, I've been to a few courses, I've been to a few places. This is by far the best lodging I've had. Uh, and so far, we've been treated like adults, with the exception of a couple of workers at some medical facilities. Um, but yeah, I mean, at this point in your career, you're a commissioned officer. Um, they expect you to act like one. So I think as long as you act like one, they're going to treat you like one. Just follow the rules. Don't do anything stupid. And I think you'll be all right. So um, I think that's about it for week one. I figure this is about 20 21 minutes at, at this point so um, yeah make sure you bring copies of like all of your paperwork I mean all of your paperwork uh, multiple copies of things because you're going to be doing a lot of paperwork uh, a lot of in processing making sure things get switched on with your finance um, if you're guard a lot of that should be taken care of but a lot of folks coming over from like ROTC or active duty may have some issues so um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to get them answered to the best of my ability. Uh, like I said, I was prior service, so um, yeah, we'll leave it at that, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Out.